few views. So uh, in my five minutes or so, uh, moderator, if you would allow me just a short presentation, um, I hope you can see it there. Um, okay. So uh, the, the first issue that I quickly want to address is this the relationship uh, between competitiveness and social progress. I think it's always a strained relation. It's not an easy uh, relationship as we go forward. And my definition of competitiveness for a business is obviously that you increase your market share, you outperform those that are in the same kind of industry on the shareholder return. For a country uh, like Ukraine who live within the European Union, the question is how good can you harness your resources so that you can outperform uh, your peers on, on economic returns. And then uh, for social progress, uh, moderator, I want to emphasize that I include their public goods, that's access to electricity, access to basic infrastructure like roads and streets, whatever the case might be, even in this age, the access to affordable uh, digital data. Uh, under social goods, I mean basic education, health, primary health care, access to the law, and common goods, and you refer to that introduction, is the issue of clean air, clean water, the whole idea of, of our commitment to the Paris Agreement. But the very important point, uh, uh, Mr. Moderator and colleagues, is that it's no use to have public, social and common goods un unless they are distributed so that everybody in the population uh, can get an equitable access to them, which I think is in a country like South Africa, which is a big Gini coefficient, this is a huge issue uh, for us as well. There are basically four views on how you can bring competitiveness from a business perspective and from a social progress uh, in relation to one another. The first one is that business is, has no real responsibility for social progress. In fact, as Milton Friedman argued, it dilute business. Business should simply be competitive. The business of business is business. I must admit this is still much, although people talk against it, this is still very much the view that most uh, business people hold. And then there's the additive view to say that, yes, we must be competitive, as you can see, but there's a plus. If our finances allow and if our stakeholders give us the mandate, we can also engage in some form of social progress. The third view is, um, Prof. Porter spoke, uh, spoke yesterday in his initial work is, you can see here, the business environment, in fact, take over the idea of social progress. His whole idea of creating shared value is uh, the production of public, social and common goods should be done on the basis of the capitalist philosophy of efficiency and market share. And the last one, the one which I, Mr. Moderator, support mostly, at least intellectually, is the embedded view where we say the competitiveness is in service of social progress and not standing over and against it. And then secondly, and with that I conclude, just to show you where I am, this is the map of Africa, as you can see, 56 countries, 1.2 billion people. I'm here at the bottom in South Africa and very much close to the southernmost tip of Africa uh, in Cape Town where our business school is. South Africa is um, a, a country uh, of a fair size. We are the 33rd last economy in the world expressed in uh, dollars there uh, and we are ranked 37th in the world for GDP per capita just above $7,000. Uh, we have a population of roughly 60 million people. I must also say, Chair, we speak about social progress uh, we also carry a lot of, of uh, people from countries to the north of us. Uh, if Europe have a so-called problem with refugees, we understand that very, very well. What were the negative effects uh, of the COVID on us? Firstly, our unemployment already increased with almost 6%. And this is the narrow definition of unemployment. If you make it a, a looser definition of people not seeking employment, that figure can go up to 50%, which is a really big social problem. Our government debt shot up. It was 62% last year. It's now already 68 and Moody's and others predict that we will come closer to 90 or 100% soon. And remember, we are our emerging economy. We don't have a bank behind us to print money for us. Our Reserve Bank has put our forecast for growth this year from a plus 0.8 to a minus 7.3. And some people think that is a conservative estimate. That second figure 
listed share might even go to minus 10, which is the biggest loss in GDP in uh, the history of our country. It is massive. And then lastly, unfortunately, under emergency situation on the 27th of March, when we locked down our country uh, and they had to procure protective equipment, there were some cases of corruption that is now coming uh, towards our courts. Then uh, just uh, uh, what were our interventions? Uh, our government immediately increased the social grounds payments to about 18 million people for six months. So they added a bit of money to ease the pressure of the COVID. We created a solidarity fund for small and medium enterprises, and we built in a six month repayment of debt window for them. Uh, we did go in for an IMF loan, but Mr. Chair, I can tell you in Africa, um, the IMF is not loved very much because obviously of their restructuring programs. In this case, the loan was a pure loan, purely for uh, medical equipment and COVID re related expenditure. It was therefore fairly well received. We dropped our interest rates to try and stimulate the economy. In Europe, this is high, but in South Africa and Africa, this is quite low. It's the lowest interest rate we ever had since about 1980 uh, to stimulate the economy. And our government announced a stimulus package of, if you put it in Euro terms, for us, that's a lot of money, about 30 billion Euro uh, to, 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 to lead a, a recovery, uh, mostly based on the, on the building of infrastructure. I then want to conclude, Chair, what is the conclusion that we drew from the COVID crisis as an emerging economy? You must attend to the immediate social crisis, food security, security of housing, uh, security of basic income. We had to do that very quickly. We also had to make short term economic interventions, like, for instance, uh, debt relief, uh, using insurance funds to try and help businesses still pay uh, the salaries to their people for a period of time. But also, we must use this opportunity to restructure the economy beyond COVID into medium term growth. And we might talk a little bit more about that later. The reason why I think these broad measures are important is you cannot simply look at financial capital if you not only look at the social side of your country and obviously not check that you do not uh, uh, prepare for a new ecological age in which we live at the moment. So thank you very much. I think that is about my five minutes. I appreciate my two views. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Pete, for your excellent and inspiring uh, presentation. I particularly like, you know, your attention to the public goods. For many years in economics, particularly, yeah. we were focusing on private goods, investing yes. and so on. I mean, then abandoned, you know, uh, the public goods. All global com commons suffered yeah. a lot from this. And this is why we are facing climate change, we have the, uh, facing the uh, tremendous laws, uh, uh, biodiversity and so on and so on. So this is something what uh, uh, I am pleased that you raised that issue. Also, I like uh, your statement that competitiveness should work for social progress. I love it and I will popularize among my students. And then finally, uh, yeah, the term just an interesting Intrinsic point. Uh, yeah. South Africa is the most industrialized economy on the African continent. We're slightly smaller in GDP than Nigeria, but we have had a massive industrialization. And our contribution to carbon dioxide is by far the largest. And so we have to take serious measures. We talk about later. If we now restructure the economy post COVID, we can use it as an interesting example to green our economy. And if you give me time later in the open discussion, I'll give you some examples. Okay. Thank you very much, Pete.